Hey everybody, welcome back to Will of the Maker. Today we are going to be looking at Cura, a very common used slicer. That I think has probably fallen a bit behind uh, in times recently, but one of the benefits of Cura is it does allow for extensions. So I've gone through and picked out my favorite extensions to help make Cura that much better. And I'm gonna show them to you so you don't have to spend your time going through the list of, ex of extensions that are available. So without further ado, let's see how we can make Cura great again. So I'm going to be using the latest version of Cura, which is 5.7. It just recently came out as a new feature I'm really excited about uh, that I will definitely use a lot. I'll talk about it at the end. Additionally, there are a lot of extensions out there that are either printer specific or firmware type specific, like Clipper specific settings or LAU Neptune specific settings. I'm not looking at that. I'm just looking at the general extensions that could apply to anybody. So with that being said, let's open up Cura and take a look. All right, so getting started here in Cura, I'm using the latest version, which is 5.7. You can see I have my Benchy loaded up as it should be. So to find extensions to download and install, it's very simple. You go to the marketplace right up in this upper right corner and you just click on it. And then you get this window that pops up and basically a list of extensions will greet you. It's very clear, it's basically just a list. There's not a thousand extensions or anything to worry about. I think right now they're sitting at 51 extensions. So you can just basically just scroll through them and then keep loading them and you get to the end fairly quickly. To install them, it's also fairly simple. You just click on an extension you're interested in and you get this description right here. You can go to the plugin website to find out more, which will load typically a GitHub page. Uh, some have more information than others. You can see this one, Banana Split, basically takes the model uh, and splits it in two. Uh, if you say you need to join it or do different things for supports, uh, you can do that. Uh, if you decide you want to install it, you just click Install and it will install you accept the terms of conditions and sometimes you might need to restart cura to be able to use it so you restart cura and that would work so it's basically as simple as that so now getting into the first extension that i really like it's called tabbed settings and it is by field of view it is a very useful extension because if you've been using cura for a long time you're probably familiar with endlessly scrolling through hundreds of different settings to play around with and you're always trying to find the right one you scroll past it too fast because there's so many settings what tab settings will do is create this list over here of icons that you basically select. It goes directly to whatever you want to do and it'll only show those ones. Uh, it's very useful. It's a very nice quality of life improvement. You can see if you want to change a temperature or whatever, you can easily click there, go to special modes to the at the end, pop back to the beginning. Favorites are at the top. You can choose which ones to show there. I just basically have it show everything. You can do changed settings here if you're interested in seeing what you've changed. Uh, so it's very, very useful extension. So basically go to marketplace and it is called tabbed settings by field of view. Yeah, go ahead and install it. The next setting that I think is pretty useful is called settings guide. And what this does is give you a lot more information and examples of what each setting will do and how it will affect your print. So this could be really useful whether you are a beginner or a seasoned pro because sometimes they come out with new features or you have never even seen you know one of these settings or never tried it out. Maybe the explanation was not very good. This will give you a much more thorough understanding of what each feature is actually doing with say a without picture and a with picture or if you want to check out different types of infill you could do that over here um, and scroll through the different types of infill so this could be very very useful just to quickly scroll through what the different options are what they look like without having to try and slice and try and slice and try and slice or print multiple things without realizing exactly what you're changing. So again, this one is called Settings Guide. Uh, it is by Ghost Keeper and definitely highly recommended. So the next tool is a fairly small one, but definitely can have its uses. 
Uh, it's called the measure tool and it is by field of view. So if you want, you can go up here and search measure tool and it comes up right here. And basically what it does is allow you to measure uh, different points on your print bed or your model. So you can see right now I don't have the model highlighted, but over here the measure tool is, is always available. And so basically you just open or click it so you get this menu here and you can click anywhere you want. You can see the coordinates of this first black mark and then say another one over here, uh, the coordinates of the second one and then the distance between them in X and Y. And if this were on a model in Z as well, uh, and then you can see the total distance between those two points is about 241 millimeters. If you want to, you can reset it here and say you want to see how how long is a bench sheet. Well, let's try and get as close to the edge there and probably find the longest point out here, right on that edge, would be about 60. Let's call it 60 right here in X, uh, as that is the axis that that measurement is on. The next extension is very useful if you're trying to dial in settings on a new filament or say a new printer. It is called Auto Towers Generator. So you can go to the marketplace, Auto Towers Generator. And it's right here by Brad Karchner. So click on that. And basically what this will do is give you a lot of different shapes. So there are pre-generated towers, uh, but if you can also do custom ones, but if you wanna do custom ones, you have to install open SCAD onto your computer and then it'll work automatically. So it is not an option anywhere here, but what it is is under extensions and then auto towers. And you can see there's a list of different options you can generate. Uh, for example, you can do a retract tower, click on that, and that will create these generations here. In theory, this should automatically work. I have seen sort of mixed results uh, about it. I don't know if I can see how much retractions there are uh, visualized. So if I were to do a temperature tower for PLA, clears the print bed, slice it, you can see the different temperatures here, it says PLA, temp tower, and it will go through the different temperatures. So Cura, you cannot unfortunately visualize the temperatures. I did look at the G-code and it does actually change the G-code for this. However, for some things I had maybe not quite as good results. So if I wanted to do a speed tower, this should be easily visualizable in Cura, but it does not seem to work correctly. So your mileage may vary on this one. Um, another option you could do is do a custom shape here and basically slice different speeds and do it manually, but at least you get the shape. So it does come with a lot of different shapes and you may or may not have to manually adjust them yourself. And I'll go through the next extensions to show how you can really easily create custom uh, settings for a part. The next extension that I find incredibly useful, unfortunately doesn't seem to be available in the or extensions marketplace anymore. And it was called Cylindric Custom Support. If you search for it, it doesn't come up and I'll show it right here. His extensions are no longer in the marketplace. I do not know why. I was able to get these a couple months ago without a problem. Maybe with 5.7, it's no longer listed. But what you can do is go to his plugin website, which I will link below because you won't be able to get to it, but you can see it's right here, github.com slash five axis for the specific one. It's now called custom support cylinder. And you can manually install it here. You download the repository and then you basically just, once you get it onto your computer, you can just drag and drop into the print surf print area here and it'll load automatically. And just, you just restart Kira and you can use this. So what can you do with this extension? A lot, it's very useful for me. So you can make your own custom supports how you want them. You can change the size of them and it will generate supports right where you put them, which is nice. If I were to do a preview, you can see there is now support there. Pretty nice. Uh, you can do different styles, different shapes. So if you want it, those are cylinders, but you can also do a tube here. You can see that's a tube. You change the parameters here and that will work like that.
but there are also uh, custom shapes. You can make a bridge, for example, auto orientation, and so it tries to find the best one. Kind of nice little feature. There are several different types of support you can create as you can see. But what I really like to use it for is creating custom settings in particular areas of a print. So what you can do, say if you want a lot of support underneath here, you can create this block, you can move it around, you can scale it however you want, just like that. I don't know why it's doing this, but it's kind of causing the bench to go up, but I already get that back into position. What you can do, you go to uh, per model settings. And instead of having it print as support, you can do modify settings for overlap. And you can say do a wall thickness here of 15, basically make it solid, slice it. And if I were to do a preview, whatever is in that block is going to be basically solid. So if I go down, you can see where that block was and that is completely solid here so this area will be very strong depending on how you want your model to be printed uh, you can save material in some areas by reducing infill but putting strength where you want it alternatively say for the speed test over here you could go back to cylindric supports create a cube and then you can make it really big it's unnecessarily big but it'll work for us and then you go to modify settings for overlap and so if you want to do a speed select cutting mesh for this type of object select settings speed you can do print speed select all the ones you want to do and then you can say set this one to be 100 and you can then do a multiply make a co copy bring the second one up to where you want it so let's do that and then go back to the settings for overlaps, do 120. And if we were to slice this, just to give an example, and see the speeds, you can now see the difference in speeds as it's supposed to be. So you would obviously just have to con continue this up the tower and get it done that way. So I will have a link to this settings GitHub down below because it's not in the marketplace, but I will have a link. So make sure you check this one out. All right, so the last extension that I'm going to share is another one from 5-axis, which means it's unfortunately not available in the marketplace. I already have it installed, so I can find it under my settings menu under installed plugins, but it is called Tab Anti-Warp. And if we were to go to the website for it, you can see basically what it is doing. It is a useful tool to add tabs in areas and corners where you are worried might peel up on the print bed. So this helps give a little bit of extra print surface, basically like a brim, but only in a localized location. So how it works, you select the model. Once you have it installed, you select the model, go to tab anti-warping here, and you can choose the size of the circle. You can choose how far away it is from your part, and you can choose how tall you want it to be. And so if I were to select here and click in the corner, it creates a nice 10 millimeter disc right there. And it should be about 0.25, a quarter millimeter away from the edge of the part once I slice it. So if I were to slice it and go to preview, you can see the X and Y distance right there. It should be about 0.25. If I wanted to, I can even show this off even more. Click on a new one and re-slice it with the one millimeter distance and now you can see so the xy distance is global for all the tabs that you place in and you can see how much that has grown right there if you want to the last option is called define as capsule and i'll show that over here so if you click on the corner there you can see it kind of has a bowl shape it goes up on the edges and basically that should help you know be able to pry the corner off there as well so again that's tab anti-warping i will have a link to it down below because you cannot get it in the marketplace currently i hope that changes soon and gets corrected but all of five axes extensions and he does have a few others that are, could also be useful are uh pretty helpful 
The last thing I want to mention here is a new feature in Cura 5.7 that I am pretty excited about. And it is very useful if you print multiple objects and you do them one at a time instead of all at once. One of the issues that has always been is the print order has been hard to choose. So here I have four benchies and normally I like to do front to back and I kind of stagger them side to side. And that's basically just to kind of give a little bit more room where the print head could kind of clear this area and not have to be as far back. And you just have enough space to clear the uh, motion system. But the problem is you put four, four objects in there, you order them, you position them how you want them to be and it prints in a order that does not make any sense for what you're trying to do. And so sometimes you can try changing the position of these things, but it doesn't always work out and you spend a lot of time trying to work on that. Well now in 5.7, they made it so that you can adjust the print sequence yourself. And in order to do that, you go to the special modes, print sequences one at a time, as it's, you know it should be for this. And then there's this new option here, set print sequence manually. So you check that and you can then choose which order you want them to be printed at. So right now, if I were to reslice it and go through them again, it's still in that bad order. But what I want to do is have this one first, second, third, and fourth. So the easiest way to do that is, okay, start here. This is the first one, it's at the top of the list. The next one I want should be this one. Here is at the bottom of the list. So what I do, you right click on the object in the list and you do print before STL2, which brings it up one more. I really, I want it to bring it up again. So it's now second in the list right here. One, two, three, okay, that's good. And then four, that's good. If I needed to change the order to go backwards, you can do print after. So these are the new two options that you can use to control it. And now I have it basically in the order that I want it to print. I re-slice. And now if I visualize it, this is going in backwards from top to bottom. You can see that it is now in the correct order. So this is a big improvement for me for how I like to print multiple objects. I'm very happy with this new feature, but there are still a couple more features that I would love to see integrated into Cura. All right, so now that you've learned how to use some of the features that are currently available to you in Cura, either through extensions or a new option, there are a couple new features that have come around uh, in some other slicers that I would really love to see Cura implement. I think it would really help Cura bring it up to more of a, into the modern era where there are a lot of developments out there in other areas. Orca Slicer seems to really be pushing the bounds right now. Uh, one thing that I am really excited about is the new scarf joint. I think that is so cool of a feature and can hopefully eliminate the Z-seam. I always thought that, that something like that would make sense. You know, like when you're painting something, you don't you don't start spraying and then move, you move as you go and scarf joint seems to kind of be in that uh, realm. So that really will help, you know, minimize the Z joint. I'm probably gonna switch over to Orca Slicer just for that very soon. The other thing that I would love to see in Cura is more control over surface texturing. Possibly seeing my video about fuzzy skin. I really do like using fuzzy skin, but I would love to be able to have a little bit more control over it and maybe have different types of patterns that you could implement into it. But I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you have any features that you would like to see in Cura? Maybe something completely new that hasn't been thought of yet? Comment down below. Maybe if we get lucky, somebody from the development team over at Ultimate Gear Cura will see it and can start working on it. That would be really cool. But thank you so much for watching. But if you did find this video helpful, uh, I hope you did. And if you did, make sure you let me know, comment down below, hit that like button, and hopefully I've earned your subscription. Uh, last I checked, I'm still at like 99% of viewers not subscribed. If you could bring that percentage up, that would really mean a lot to me. The subscriber count has been growing, so I'm very, very excited about that and hope to be able to get more videos out soon. I had to work on some other things in the meantime, but hopefully uh, I can get back into it. So anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.